Okay, I'm muting it. Okay. Hey guys, it's Dina. I'm here with the lovely Tiffany DuVernay. She is a empowerment specialist. Um, she's a domestic violence survivor and um, okay, look, I won't keep it real with y'all right now. We have some te technical difficulties and I'm a, a little lot. flustered, but I am very excited to be here to, to discuss how to retrain your brain with the wonderful Tiffany DuVernay. She is going to help you guys. She's going to walk you through her personal journey and kind of give you guys some strategy around how to move forward after experiencing trauma. In particular, um, she has some dealings with domestic violence and um, nobody can say it better than her. So I'm gonna let you guys, let her introduce herself a little bit and just talk a little bit about her story. And then um, I want you guys to get ready with some questions. I know there was a lot of people when I posted this a little earlier in the week that had questions and comments. If you guys are here right now with us, please, oh, Welcome to FlyNubianQueen.com here on Facebook. <laughs> Thank you for being here tonight. Please subscribe, please like, please share. And Tiffany, take it away. Okay, so first I want to say, um, we just met on, a, on an airplane. <laughs> yeah. And that um, Dina was not even scheduled to, she wasn't even assigned a seat next to me. She just made it her seat and it ended up working out with the person who had that as an original seat. So I looked at her and I said, why are you sitting here? So she was telling me why. I was like, no, why? Like, why is the real reason you're sitting here? And we talked for three hours straight before we took a break on what, like a five and a half hour flight. So I just want to say it was a joy meeting you and I appreciate it appreciate connecting with you. So I'll start there. Yeah, it was um, an absolute blessing. Thank you so much okay. for being here. I mean, the information that she's going to share with us tonight, she shared a little bit of it with me on the plane. And um, I just felt that it was going to be something very healing for us here at Fly Nubian Queens. So keep your mind and your spirits open, ladies. She's going to tell us some really great stuff. Yeah, and I just, uh, I'm looking forward to answering questions and shedding light on any of this but um right now I'll start by saying that I just recently got trained you know Los Angeles is becoming more trauma informed so that um the people in our community that need help are receiving help through a lens of compassion and empathy and love because it doesn't always come natural apparently people have to be trained but what what we're learning is just the way that trauma has affected um you know our brains and the reason that um i was selected to be a trainer in trauma and resiliency is because of my is because of my lived experience and so i advocate for domestic violence mental health homelessness um, the incarcerated and formerly incarcerated and domestic violence and it's because of my lived experience in those areas that makes me a lived experience expert. And so, so I do go to city, I advocate on the city, county, a little bit on a state and national level. So I was actually coming from DC talking to Maxine Waters when I met you. And um, I am just speaking up for someone who, someone who can't speak up. And I'm able to speak up because I went after my healing. So I will say that, um, have a adult onset mental illness and I say that because I was in a toxic rela relationship that I stayed in too long and by the time I was leaving that relationship I told myself you know I'm going to wake up dead or in jail on accident or on purpose and I went on a healing journey to find out why I chose this man why I stayed so long and how to never choose him again in another person um, I've gone on to do the 40 hour domestic violence training to be a domestic violence counselor. And um, I really just use that in personal life um, with just relationships that I have or people that I meet. I'm not like in a clinic or anything like that. I also use it on a platform to help change policy when it comes to domestic violence. But that relationship, um, when I went on my healing journey, like I was saying, 
I sought out therapy and I, I, I had um, 12 sessions with a, somebody for depression. I said, don't get any medication. If there's a way for me to not be depressed, teach me how to do that. And then she went on to send me to 40 sessions of PTSD therapy with a PTSD therapist. And I told her the same thing. Don't give me medicine. If there's a way for me to recognize when I'm being triggered into PTSD because I was walking around feeling like anxious and on the edge and things like that. How do I not hurt the wrong person? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't want to be going off in line, in traffic, a friend or family member, um, at work, at school, whatever. And I'm, I'm naming places that people, we tend to see people, you know, going off or overreacting or something like that. But basically I needed to get my own self in check because I, rec I wasn't recognizing things that had now become part of my character as a result of basically arguing with a madman who I believe was undiagnosed. But the diagnosis that I have is um, depression, anxiety, and PTSD. And I feel like that's very common in our community. And um, the reason I'm speaking about it so freely is because I also like to help to reduce the stigma associated with uh, mental health, mental health and getting therapy. I know people are afraid to, you know, in our community, they say, oh, therapy is for the white man or um, people are afraid to get on medication um, and rightly so. But I do believe that we do need um, assistance. I also became homeless um, as a result of that relationship. And I had to fight my way, you know, through the system into housing. And um, I, I, I did, I haven't had a chance to spend a lot of time in the group, but I did see the post about, you know, are you able to retrain your brain? And I know I was able to retrain my brain. And, um, you know, I wanna be able to address the traumas that are in our community. Um, a lot of us are affected by incarceration, whether it's us or a loved one or a family member. I never thought I would be affected by that. Look, I didn't grow up like that. No gangbangers or people in and out of jail in my family, but I was arrested twice in my relationship. And um, I'm gonna say this right now, but I actually married a man who was incarcerated for 35 years. He's off parole. But um, he's amazing. He's not the stereotypical this person. Is your, this is your new that's come husband. out of prison. This is my only husband. Your, your, but your current relationship, which is a healthy relationship. Correct. Okay. So if I could interject here, <clears throat> thank you so much for sharing your story, Tiffany. Thank you. Welcome everybody to flynubianqueen.com here on Facebook. Um, if you haven't already, please take a moment to like, subscribe, and share. This evening, we are talking about how to retrain your brain after trauma. And we have Tiffany DuVernay here, who is an empowerment specialist. She is also trained in trauma and resiliency, which we're going to talk about a little bit tonight, and giving us some strategies to get past, um, to get past the trauma in your life. Like this, this topic actually, what she touched on, what she touched on about mental illness. Um, I've had so many conversations with women in my lives, young women, older women, family members, friends, sometimes even strangers. And I do believe that in our community, seeking help, because of things that you are going through, have gone through, feel like, you know, anxious about the potential of going through is still unfortunately taboo. Things are getting better. People are feeling more comfortable in getting therapy and going and talking to someone and taking time out to kind of do self-assessments to, to, you know, self-checks where they can say, you know what, maybe I need to see someone, maybe I need some medication, maybe I'm a little bit out of control, but there's still this stigma. And I know you guys have pro who have been coming here and watching me week after week know that I am focused on us 
elevating to the level of queens in real life, not just going around saying, hey, queen, hey, queen, what's up, queen? What I'm a queen. Really trying to embody that energy and treating yourself accordingly. So this video tonight is not, first of all, I want you guys to know that there is absolutely no judgment. Everyone who is here with us tonight joining us is in a safe space. So if you have questions, comments, concerns um, that you want to bring up, we will be taking some of those a little bit later on, um, coming up shortly. I want you to feel comfortable to share what you need to share. And if you don't feel comfortable sharing something, then by all means, understand that this is a public forum. This is being recorded and it will be up on YouTube. So um, later on, we're gonna give out some contact information for Tiffany and she will be able to direct you if you find that you can see yourself in any parts of these stories and you want to get help and you want to get um, start moving towards your healing journey. Um, she will be able to direct you to those um, support groups, those programs, um, and maybe get you some personal coaching. So I just wanted to put that out there for people. Um, if you haven't already, please uh, check out flynubianmoney.com. Um, or flynubianbusiness.com if you have a business idea. And if you'd like to get some of our gear, you can definitely go to shopfnq.com. So before we get back into um, your some of your story, Tiffany, I just wanted to let people know that um, Tiffany's, one of her core philosophies is she believes that we can break patterns and cycles with love, empowerment, and compassion. When not attentive to others, you're going to find her advocating, like she said, for the city, the county, the state, and national level. So I want you to understand that tonight we are speaking with an advocate. She's an advocate. And if you guys understand what an advocate is, that is a person who is working on your behalf, who is speaking on your behalf, who is pushing things forward on your behalf. And a lot of times when people are out here experiencing PTSD from whatever trauma it may have been in their lives, domestic, physical, mental, spiritual, sexual abuse from family, friends, coworkers, whatever it is that, you know, car accidents, physical traumas, whatever it is that you're experiencing, sometimes you can feel that you are so alone. People just don't understand what you're going through. Tonight, we have an advocate here. So I want you guys to listen up and take note of what she's saying and allow her in these moments that we're here tonight to be an advocate for you. Know that you are not alone, okay? Know that we are here for you in this moment and we're gonna try to help you guys get to the next phase of your healing. There's no shame in that. Be proud that you're here. So really quickly, um, I'm not seeing comments anymore. If you guys, I see a lot of thumbs up. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. I'm going to let Tiffany get back to telling her story. Can you take it back to how did you even get into the situation? Did you, did you have a traumatic childhood? Um, or was it just so, how that you got into it? Yeah. So usually usually is some sort of normalcy to it, um, these toxic relationships. So I'm gonna talk about myself, but I'll say what like- you normalcy? If you grew up fighting like with your siblings or if you, if you grew up getting beat by your parents, you know, there's an element of domestic violence right there in the home that we look at as normal, okay? Would you say and this, this leads to more normal in our communities or is this kind of an across the board thing? I can only speak for our community. I don't know. I can only speak for our community. Okay. Um, a friend of mine did her 40 hour domestic violence training in the Asian community. And according to her, their domestic violence in the home is worse than what's going on in the black community. Wow. But um, <clears throat> first I want to say to look up the power and control wheel, or maybe it's something I can post later in the group, power and control wheel, because awareness is everything. And um, when there's this physical violence in the home, we're not looking at it, oh, it's physical violence. But if you can think back to being 
beaten by your parents, that is physical violence. If you can think to fighting in school or fighting in your home with your siblings, that's physical violence. But there's something that becomes normal about it and carries over to teenage years and our adult relationships where we may not, we look over too much is what's happening. So mine would stem from, I would say, exactly. Are you guys able mine, to see? Yeah, but they can't read it, but that's what the power control that's, Yeah, like. when you look it up, that's what it'll okay. look like. Mm -hmm. But my, I would say it would stem from uh, my teenage years. I was in the home with my father and my stepmother and there was a lot of verbal abuse there. And then I, with my stepmother and the emotional abuse, I would say from my dad would be his emotionally withdrawing. And um, my stepmother slapped me a couple of times and I wasn't used to that. My mom passed away is what happened when I was 11. And so I went to go live with them. And one time she slapped me and we ended up fighting. Of course, that was her last time slapping me. But um, what was normal in that was my family. My, mom, my mother's side of the family giving me messages to stick in there, stick it out, like wait till I graduate high school. I was with them the seventh through the 12th grade. So it would, it would have been closer to like my 10th and 11th grade years with my family telling me, hang in there, stick it out. It's gonna be okay. Wait until this, you know, instead of saying, okay, I'm in a unhealthy situation and I need to leave. So I, I remember those messages when I was in that relationship. So this relationship would have been the age of like 33 to 38, where I'm hanging there and sticking it out with this man. And then I also had messages that I got from my Bible. So I was heavily involved in my scriptures in my 20s and the beginning of my 30s. So I also had a lot, lot of messages um, about compassion and love and forgiveness that um, I was also getting, you know, mentally, that kept me pushing forward with this person that I didn't need to, to be um, involved with. And so I need another question. Okay, so <laughs> or remind me of your no, question. No, 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 this is fine. So okay. let's stop here because I was kind of checking out this um, power and control wheel, right? So on this wheel, we have a couple of different areas I want to point out because as I was listening to you, I could hear, you know, if you could uh, help us identify, um, it's between physical violence and sexual violence, right? So, or I guess it includes both of those, right? These things you tell me because you you kind of know about this a little bit better. Well, each, each, if you look at it like a pie, each slice of pie has its own piece of violence right on that wheel so it but it, but this could be used for either physical or oh, okay something. is that what it okay. is is yes. that okay so i just so happen have... to not have any like molestation or rape in my background but i've studied the bible with hundreds of women and i want to say about 70 percent of them have been molested and um that that's a that's trauma of course. That's traumatic. And especially so, if it happened more than one time. And this is something that an individual would really need to deal with and heal from and actually do some, um, I call it healing and dealing. I call it um, inner work. I call it loving thyself. That we really need to be able to take a step back to acknowledge that something actually happened. And uh, uh, many times is the, the mother who's not protecting us, whether she knows or doesn't know. In some cases, the mother does know and still doesn't protect. Those things affect us well into our 20s, 30s, 40s. If we don't deal with them, they don't just go away. Let's talk about that because I have um, a, a lot of friends and myself included who had very rocky relationships with their moms. And um, in most cases, the moms experienced some traumas and did not necessarily address those traumas, did not get healing therapy for those traumas, just kind of tried to deal with them, didn't necessarily do the best job at dealing with them. 
And then that ended up um, reflecting in how we were raised and reared. And I can see on this wheel, because I wanted to get back to this power and control wheel, some of the things that you don't even think about. I wanted to put that out there for people. Using coercion and threats. Okay, this can be subtle sometimes, right? It can be subtle. So, I want to let me just say something really quick. So, in a nutshell, how do I, if you're going to ask yourself, well, how do I know if I'm in an unhealthy relationship? Mm -hmm. Because when you have been in one, and then I stayed in support groups for five years because I was so determined not to repeat this. Uh, I believe I said in the beginning, like, why did I choose this person? Why did I stay so long? And how do I never choose him again? And the next man, because that's what I, this is my first adult relationship. Can you repeat just an experience those with, three questions? Because yeah. ladies and gentlemen, I want you to take note of these three questions to ask yourself. Why did I choose this person? Why did, you why did I stay so long? Why, did, why do and I stay so long? I never do him again in the next person. And what? How do I never choose him again in the next person? And I was elaborating on that, that that's a very common thing that I see um, women do is we'll leave one situation and go to the next situation and it can be similar. And sometimes we'll think it's us or we'll think it's just normal, but it's really not. And so one of the things I remember being taught um, with other women that I was in these support groups with, because you're kind of tainted after that. You know, you're, you're tainted like, well, how do I know <laughs> what's real and what's not? How do I know? It's almost like, how do I know what, what love is? How do I know if it's just a regular little disagreement, but I'm blowing it up? Like, what's the distinction? So the distinction, I'm gonna give you four words, okay? Aggression, manipulation, domination intimidation and what for what for those should not be happening so in a healthy relationship you will have normal ups and downs that's part of life you're going to have normal up, up, ups and downs with your significant other but when your i'm going to call them disagreements when your disagreements are comprised of aggression or manipulation or domination or intimidation, those are red flags that it's unhealthy or toxic or dysfunctional. So let's go over that again. What is the first one? Aggression. Aggression. Manipulation. Manipulation, okay. Domination. Domination. Intimidation. Intimidation. Okay, let's see if we can get some comments. I want to see what you guys think about this really quick. Um, it's very common it? for, and it's not just women who experience this, men do too. Yes, they do. So I all it takes is one unhealthy person for your relationship to be considered unhealthy. Wow, I never even thought about it that way. Um, so Craig Muhammad, Sorry, Toya Austin says counseling before coaching. Emily Dawn says, I don't feel domination is bad. I feel domineering is bad. Do you have anything to say on that, Tiffany? Well, what's the difference? Okay, Emily, what is the difference? So is this domineering woman? Is this like a bossy, possessive person or this domineering man? Or maybe, I mean, some people like domination. I'm not sure what she's talking about. Are you talking about like with the SM, BDM, BDSM thing? Because maybe you need, to ask, you need to ask her that because that's not even that's what, I'm, that's what I'm asking. I'm yeah. asking Emily if she's talking about yeah. that. <laughs> because if you're talking about that, then girl, do your thing. But um, we're talking about it. In Let me ask you something. Do you want to be dominated? If, you, if you're in a loving relationship with a man, do you want someone that's dominating you, controlling you, telling you what to do? Is that what you want? Is that love? Is it? You know, you're making me really think about some of the relationships that I've had. I do like, um, I do enjoy a man who is a good leader. 
Um, and sometimes I think the media puts forth images of that type of man being kind of domineering or dominating or overbearing. Um, I even think about that whole 50 shades of gray foolishness that came out like, you know, a year or so ago. And it really did blur the lines of acceptable behavior for a, a healthy relationship. I don't know if we were supposed to be viewing that as an ideal relationship, the way they were promoting it and marketing it. Um, let's go to a couple more comments. Crystal Ashley Lawson says, amen indeed, but these people unreal out here today. Crystal, you have to, okay, uh, expand on that a little bit. So Crystal put in aggression, two, manipulation, three, domination, four, intimidation. Thank you for reposting that, um, Crystal. Toya Austin, signs of control in a relationship are unhealthy behavior, signs of control. So I wanted to go back to that wheel because I feel like that is worth exploring. So in this wheel that, that uh, you talked about, using coercion and threats is one is a piece of the pie, using intimidation, using emotional abuse, using isolation, minimizing, denying, and blaming, um, using children, using male privilege, and using economic abuse, preventing her or him from getting a job, keeping a job, making him or her ask for money, giving her or him an allowance, taking her his money, not letting her, him know about or have access to family income. Um, using coercion and threats, making and or carrying out threats to do something to hurt her or him, threatening to leave her or him. I had a really crazy cycle, um, I would say in my past relationships, I'm just going to put it out there for you guys, where I was experiencing, you know, I would threaten to leave. And then my boyfriend would threaten to leave and then I would threaten to leave. And it, it just became so annoying. And I did recognize it as a form of abuse, like an emotional abuse. Um, and, I kind of, and I got out of there like pretty quickly, like the relationship didn't go for much longer, you know, after we started with that, because I recognized that that was not healthy for us to be doing. And so I don't even know if people realize that, but that was a revelation for me. So I really encourage everyone in here to look up the um, power and control wheel and read through it and see if, you know, if you're, if you're questioning even that, hey, am I suffering from trauma? Um, what Tiffany is telling us right now is the first thing we have to do is, in order to retrain our brain, is to identify and, real, and accept the fact or admit the fact that you are in an unhealthy situation or you're experiencing unhealthy patterns. Am I saying that correctly? Go ahead and rephrase it. Well, <laughs> first of well, something I was thinking about has to do with suffering and silence. When you are really in something toxic and dysfunctional, whether it's somebody's constantly belittling you or whether you're having knockdown drag out fights, you're gonna suffer in silence. So for me, my abuse wasn't, <clears throat> I would say we had a couple of um, like physical incidents, but not not where I was necessarily hurt or hospitalized or anything like that. It's just, I just know I'm not supposed to be getting pushed. Um, I can get into some more details of a couple of things, incidents that happened, but I would say mine was mostly verbal, can emotional, you, can mental. You a couple of examples of those things? In my spiritual. Mind? A couple examples of what? So I, it's easy to know that if someone pushes you or hits you, okay, they're abusing me. But sometimes I think it's more subtle with emotional abuse in particular. Well, example like mind games, maybe someone may lie to you and then tell you the truth or tell you the truth and then lie and say, no, that wasn't the truth. Um, if someone's intentionally doing things to you, you may, they may move things that you're looking for. It's just, it's a mind game. 
or maybe it's something that has to do with um, like if someone is cheating and they're just, you know, playing tricks on you. But bottom line is that a mind game falls under um, emotional abuse. Um, that's what's coming to my mind right now. And these are all things, this conversation is intended to be like eye-opening and to prick your interest, pique your interest, and for you to specifically look up into definitions, you know? Um, but they, they really coincide like mental, verbal, emotional, those can pretty much be, I don't want to say lumped together because they're their own individual thing, but it's hard to escape one without the other one being there. That's what I'm trying to say. And then there's also educational abuse, spiritual abuse, financial abuse. I think the power and control will cause it economic abuse. But it's important to look into these things to see exactly what they are because it's about our awareness. Like, is this what I'm experiencing? And sometimes being able to have um, a label, even though we don't want those judgmental labels, being able to put a name to something or have a label will actually give us that aha moment for us to know that we're not alone. And that's what I was saying is that this can be a very alone experience where we're suffering in silence. So, Okay. Let me go dark for a minute because the sun is going down over here and I need to turn on my light. Is that okay? okay that's perfect because I can just take okay. a moment and say thank you. And I can still hear you, but yeah. I'll be right back. No problem. Let me do my little promos. Hi guys, it's Dina. I'm here with Tiffany DuVernay, Empowerment Specialist. And tonight we are getting into how to retrain your brain after trauma. Can you put the mute on for a second, Tiffany, if you can, while you're doing that? Um, so if you haven't already, I'd love for you to give us the thumbs up. Please like, subscribe, and share if you haven't already to flynubianqueen.com on Facebook. Um, I want you guys to go check us out on iTunes. Um, we have a podcast over there now. If you haven't already, um, check out and subscribe to our network for melanated men called flynubiankingtv.com. We're also on YouTube at flynubian. Queen doc, I think it's flyingnubianqueentv.com over on YouTube. Um, if you want to get your money up, you should go to flynubianmoney.com. If you're interested in starting a business, go to flynubianbusiness.com. I want to thank everyone for showing up tonight. Um, this is a pretty intense topic. I, in talking to Tiffany a couple of different times now, each time I talk to her, I feel like another onion layer has been peeled away from my life to where I'm getting to the core of some of my personal issues because I feel like in general, we all have things that we're dealing with. So um, what she was saying about people feeling like they're alone, I really want you to know out here, whoever you are, wherever you are watching it, if you're watching it live or if you're watching it later on in the YouTube broadcast, you are not alone. I experienced trauma in my life. And as a, re as a result of that, um, has, have had trouble maintaining healthy relationships with the men in my, life, in my life, as well as having some difficulty or I would say patterns of attracting um, toxic relationships with some of my female friends um, that I think kind of reminded me or um, was re me reenacting some of my uh, relationship styles with my mom that were unhealthy. Um, and so I want you guys to know that you're not alone. There are many people out here going through this. What you are brave for even being here and listening to this and opening yourself up to receive this message. And if I am hearing what Tiffany is saying correctly, one of the first steps in retraining your brain is to identify what's going on in your life, identify the pattern, and 
kind of take that information and begin to move it forward. Like once you identify and say, okay, I know that something doesn't feel right. Um, something's going on here. What is it? That's like the first step. You have to ad admit that something is happening, right? Or am I, is, am I on the right path with that? Well, we're actually talking about two different things. So okay. acknowledgement, you can hear me, right? Yeah. Okay. So awareness and acknowledgement, I would say is the beginning of healing and dealing and mm -hmm. going on that inward journey of healing and dealing yeah. and focusing on loving yourself. And I call it doing inner work, mm -hmm. as I mentioned before. And the retraining your brain is, is different. So I'm going to explain it this way. So as we're growing up, when we're in our younger years, we're only accepting in our, in our conscious mind. We're accepting, accepting, accepting everything that we see, everything that we hear, everything that we're told. Um, between the ages of four and seven, everyone is different. So somewhere between the age of four and seven, we are learning to accept or reject a thought. So you see the difference in the early years, we're only accepting. And then at a certain age, we accept or reject our thoughts. So a thought is simply a sentence that you say to yourself. That's what a thought is. And whatever we accept here, that's what comes to our subconscious, where our emotions are. Yeah, in the heart space. So this is only acceptance. So now at the age that we are, we are accepting and rejecting thoughts. But whatever we accept here, we accept here in our heart. I'm giving you a formula, okay? Whatever we accept here, which is not by choice, the choice is made here first. It plays out in our behaviors, patterns, our self-esteem, and our habits. And this is where we, this form is actually the power to retrain your brain. So if we have pattern, habits, self-esteem, um, and actions maybe that we're not proud of or that we want to change, we have to figure out where they're coming from. Because we're only behaving whatever's going on here. And whatever's going on here is coming from here. So we have to go back and tell ourselves new stories about whatever's causing us to act out certain, certain things. And it could be um, an unhealthy coping. So so once upon a time, I was 350 pounds and I lost 145 pounds, right? So I'm the one that's going to tell you fitness and nutrition are mental health issues because I'm not going to put on my tennis shoes without thinking about it. I'm not going to go around the grocery store and pick out healthy food or organic food unless I'm thinking about it. So if I want to change the way I really feel about myself and think about myself, which is my self-esteem because of um, being overweight, if I want a new behavior, or um, new habits, it's coming from here. Having new thoughts about food and new thoughts about fitness is forced into my subconscious where my emotions lie and they play out in my behavior, my patterns. And break my that down. That's one example. Yeah, break that down even further because some people don't even understand how you stop a thought. Like, you know, they're having thoughts how do you even slow yourself down to like step out of the matrix and like see the, th you know, catch the thought before it sinks into okay. your face? So I'm going to talk a little bit about cognitive behavioral therapy. Okay. Which is a similar concept to what I was just um, speaking about. Mm -hmm. So if you imagine a triangle and each tip is um, one is thoughts, one is mood and one is behavior okay we can go on a cycle if you imagine just one affecting the other so our thoughts are affecting our emotions and our behavior i'll say our mood and our behavior our mood is affecting our thoughts and our behavior and then our behavior is affecting our mood and our thought 
okay, well, how do you jump off? The way to jump off is going to be through your thought. It's not going to be through your behavior. It's not going to be through your mood. It's going to be through your thought because your thought is affecting your mood, which is affecting your behavior. Your out so, is in controlling your mind. Your out is through the mind. Exactly. I didn't catch it. So your out, the way out is the way the out mind. is through your mind. Your thoughts. So I want, I want to get this across to you. I know we have about twenty people in here, but it's not about quantity. It's about quality. The people are here tonight. They need to be here. So. I want you guys to give us a little bit of feedback right now, you ladies, you queens, and a few kings that are here. Give us a little bit of feedback and let us know what is a thought, if you, if you can share with us, what is a thought that comes into your mind that you want to get out of, that you wanna let go? Let's share that. I have a thought. I don't know. I'm scared. Can I share it? <laughs> I want to say a little bit about the work because if we're really talking about breaking a pattern, breaking cycles or breaking chains, um, family curses, whatever you want to call it. You have to do the work. So example, like um, if you keep a journal and at the end of the day, like around this time, what was my mood today? and you scale it, 10 being the highest, zero being the lowest, five is in the middle, right? What is my mood today? You, it's just you and your journal and your honesty, okay? And then you check in, what was I thinking about today? This is, this is really the work and it sounds easy, but when it comes time to do this, you really have to put in the work. I'm really going to keep a journal of my mood every day. So we have a we have a a, a quote that I want to address from Crystal Ashley Loss Larson. He <laughs> says, "Only God can heal your wounds and pull you out of the pits of despair." What are your thoughts on that? Well, something that comes to mind is that faith without deeds is dead. You still have to put in the work. Um, this Bible says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It doesn't just happen. Crystal, with love, so, do you hear that? Crystal, with love, do you receive that? And I want to mention the two greatest commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. As you are getting, as you are loving the Lord, your God, with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, you are getting to know him. And in getting to know him, you're getting to know what he says about you. So about you, what he feels about you. And that is a reprogramming of your thoughts, if you want to look at it that way. So Crystal, I want you to know that there is a God inside of you. And as she said, faith without works is dead. So you have to activate the God, the God power in you to intercept those thoughts and heal yourself. It will be through the assistance, God will assist you. But when you take that first step forward on that journey, you'll find that the way will be open to you through God's grace, through the universal energy or whatever, however people wanna, you know, you know, however you wanna name it or call it, but that energy, that planetary, that solar, that universal energy, that God energy, will rush to meet you, but you have to take that first step. You have to open yourself up to it. Thank you guys for all the hearts and the thumbs up. We feel you too. We love you too. Oh, thank you. See, I can't yeah. see that part. So thanks for letting me Thank know. you so much, guys. We, we are doing our best here. We are doing our best here. That's why I brought in an expert because I really believe that we as a community are here to, at Fly Nubian Queens, we are here to elevate and together we can move ourselves higher and higher to create um, a community of women 
who is ready to take on the challenges that we have in our in our community. We have so many things that are going on in our community now. We have broken families. We have all this trauma that has been handed down to us from way back in the days of slavery. We have these quote unquote generational curses. We have, you know, these poverty minds. We have sexual abuse. We have all this stuff that's just circulating around in our communities. And then we're talking about, we're trying to move forward and, mm -hmm you know, receive reparations and get what we do and, you know, build the community. If we don't heal ourselves first as women, we set the tone. I've said this many times in different videos. We as women, we set the tone for what's going on out here in the world. They have said, I don't know who the person was, but it's been said many times that a community, a society can only rise as high as its woman. And I say that now is the time for us to rise. So I wanna get back in really quick, Tiffany. Thank you so much. Um, I have one more comment um, about that la the last. Go ahead. And then I'm gonna read, um, somebody gave us one of their quotes that they say in their mind and I wanna get to her. Okay. So go ahead. So um, a word that I was thinking about is the word um, repentance, which is um, a word that we're familiar with if we're familiar with the scriptures. So repent is coming from a Greek word that actually means mind change. So in a sense, repent um, what is she was saying your mind. is true. God grants us repentance. So it is coming from God. But what is repentance? It is a mind change. And what is so, a mind change? Well, example, you can see repentance. So like if I smoke cigarettes, right and i need to repent from smoking cigarettes the the behavior that you actually see is that i okay i haven't smoked a cigarette in 30 years or something like that that's the action that you see but it came from a mind change mm. okay so i would dare to say from my perspective my interpretation of what you're saying is that god gave us free will if you're a person who believes in god if you're not then you can um you can just look at it simply as how she's saying it as you taking control of your thoughts and that mind energy that you're um, vibrating, right? I look at it from a spiritual realm and I say that this is you enacting your God-given free will. It is up to you to be disciplined in your mind, body and spirit. And in disciplining your mind, this is what she's giving you. She's giving you a technique to discipline your mind, to be able to choose your thoughts, to retrain your brain. So for those of you, such as Crystal, who has a strong faith, see that this is a way for you to enact your God-given free will. It's a way for you to put that work into your faith. Um, jumping in with Emily Dawn. So Emily, I shared one of my thoughts and one of my thoughts is I'm scared. And Emily was beautiful enough and open enough and brave enough to share hers and hers is maybe I deserve it. She said that that is one of her thoughts that is toxic to healing. Did you want to address her? Would you mind addressing her? Well, what comes to mind is that scripture I just quoted about the two greatest commandments is love the Lord your God with, with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. Is that as you are, as you seek, and I'll, I'll give another answer too, but I'm because we got on the, uh, you know, the spiritual tip is why I'm speaking in this manner. But as you look, what what does God say about you? What God says about you is what's, what's true. You deserving it is not true. What God says about you is what's true. So the other thing I want to say is since you know that is a toxic thought, is that um, there's balance all around us, polarities. There's negative and positive on every front, okay? Just tell yourself another sentence. As soon as you have a negative thought, 
say something different because whatever you say, that's what you're accepting here. That's what's coming here into your subconscious and your emotions. And that's what's going to play out in your life is that maybe I deserve it. So well, maybe she, you don't, but I wouldn't say maybe I don't deserve it. It's about saying whatever, what the truth is. And the truth, I'm going to tell you the truth is not that you deserve it. Emily, well, do you think you can come up with a, a different thought? Do we want to empower you to come yeah. up with your own positive thought? Yeah. Do you think you could, you know, right here, just, you know, if you feel like challenging yourself to come up with another thought thank you guys for the thumbs up the hearts everything we really appreciate it i'm gonna read a couple more comments as we're getting close to the end of the hour okay. um crystal ashley larson is fired up right now she's saying and surround yourself with more positive vibes and positive people to help heal and assist you yeah. emily dawn says thank you that's the young lady who had the maybe i deserve it you're welcome darling but you know what Emily, thank yourself for being here. Thank yourself for being open to even hear this and receive this message. You're ready. You're ready to let that stuff go and move forward. That's why you're here. So thank you for sharing in an open forum like this. Crystal Ashley Larson says, yes, we need to elevate and equip others to restore and heal broken wounds and past hurts and hangups. I'm so glad I came across this tonight. And Crystal, we are so glad that you're here. Yes. Please share this with people like we, we, we are here. This is what we as women, this is what I'm called to do. Um, I don't want to speak for anyone else, but this is what I'm called to do. Mm -hmm. So your message touches me and helps me heal and helps me fulfill my purpose. So I thank you. I thank Emily. I thank all the other people here who are watching silently. All right, so people who are watching silently um and please share this please like please subscribe to flynubianqueen.com here on facebook we're here with tiffany duvernay i think we're going to extend this out maybe another 15 minutes if tiffany is okay with that are you okay with that tiffany i think she put us on mute we'll give her a moment to come back um so let me go ahead on with these comments. We have, I can't, I can't hear you. Um, there you are. She's back. Hey. Yeah. My television came on. Just, I don't even know why. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> that's just, that's just the devil. Like, okay. Where is that's just the devil, you know, <laughs> um, <laughs> he can't stop us though. Um, so like, like okay, I said, is it okay? Is um, Tiffany, are you okay to stay with us for another 15 minutes? Of course. Yes. Okay. So I want to read these last couple of comments, right? So we have, um, Crystal Ashley, who was saying that she, earlier in the comments, she was saying her ex would cuss and scream and yell and call her names and say hurtful things to her intentionally. And now okay. she's down here saying, yeah, we need to elevate. So she's, she's fired up by this conversation. She said, amen, okay. it only matters what God thinks and says about you. Mm -hmm. You know what, Crystal, Crystal, I'm going to push that even further. It only matters what you think. What about you think about you. Yeah. yeah reclaim your power because god is going to love you regardless so you don't even have to give that power to god reclaim it girl you're here in this flesh right now he created you and put you here and you say used to she said used to right so this is a this is something she's not a part of anymore not anymore okay well congratulations on that congratulations yeah and then emily oh, power to the people to us power to the people <laughs> hey queens we here so um emily don did respond to our challenge okay. and in opposition to her earlier comment which i'm trying to find it right now oh, what, what was it um do you remember oh maybe i deserve it that was the negative comment and so when we challenged her to say what thought can you replace that with she came up with i am more right perfect see we we are experts on our own experience remember that we are the experts on our own experience and so i'm glad that you were able to come up with something genuinely on your own that you can say to yourself and um I want to say something to, I'm sorry, I don't have the names in front of me, but 
the person who was talking about uh, like being cursed out by her boyfriend, boyfriend, Crystal, and like that. Crystal, Crystal Ashley Larson. Yeah, so I'm glad that you found your way um, out of that and that you realize you didn't deserve to be treated that way. And for someone who is, um, might be in an unhealthy relationship right now, um, I would ask you what need is that person meeting? For example, um, I dated somebody for about 90 days that um, I had to come to terms with him being an alcoholic. And even after I was really convinced that he was an alcoholic, I still saw him a couple of times. And I, sh I was in these um, the domestic violence groups at the time. I used to call them my healthy relationship community classes, but really they were domestic violence support group classes. And I shared with my class and the facilitator um, asked, asked me that question. What need is he meeting? Like the reason that you would stay in a situation that you recognize is because that person is meeting a need. So in that particular situation, it was companionship. I love hanging out with him and we were laugh, 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 laugh all the time. And I hadn't had it in such a long time that it was a breath of fresh air, but I had to walk away because I knew there was no future in that. I knew that my husband was not going to be an alcoholic. So why would I be wasting my time? And because I love myself and I know that I want to be a part of a healthy relationship, I walked away from that. So that's the question to ask yourself is what need is that person meeting? So once somebody figures out or identifies the need that that person is meeting, then what? I would say that um, it's an awareness because I had to tell my, myself thing, things like, I can do bad all by myself. Um, I knew what love was. I feel like I had a fantasy childhood. So I know what love is just through my mother in my younger years. I know what love is because of the church family that I was involved with where we were really attempting to live by the scriptures. I was in love with all of these people. I feel like they love me too, you know? And so I knew what love was. And like I said, in between those two phases of my life, I was with my dad and my stepmother and I got messages from them and from my Bible about staying in this um, toxic relationship. So but, uh, messages to get out or to stay in? The messages that I was getting was stay, about staying in the relationship. Remember I was saying like, my mom's side of the family telling me to stay in there, stick it out. And then messages just from being in my scriptures about love and forgiveness and compassion and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I did come to a realization that I could get hurt on accident or hurt him on accident. That's something that empowered me to leave. I want to say that. Mm -hmm. And um, tell me your question again. Sorry. Um, I think you pretty much answered it. Good answer. um, okay. So Crystal and Emily are still in here giving shout outs. Um, Emily Don says, I have been working on my agoraphobia. Is that the one where you can't go outside? You're scared to go outside? Um, yes. I had a recent breakthrough. I am so grateful because I've had this prison for 10 years. Congratulations, Emily. You got to get outside. You got to release yourself. Um, Crystal Ashley Larson says, yes, I am more and worth it. So look at that, Tiffany, you got them on their affirmations already. Cause basically that's what, what this is in a nutshell. When you're retraining your brain, you're replacing old negative thoughts with positive thoughts or affirmations. And exactly. the affirmations are being accepted down into your heart space and the affirmations create the healing energy mm -hmm. and they start to release the roots of those negative thoughts, those negative patterns, they break the pattern. 
And what was the, what was it? It was the thought, it was the emotion and the behavior. Well, it's your conscious mind, mm -hmm. which is where your thoughts are, mm -hmm. your subconscious, where mm -hmm. your emotions are, mm -hmm. that play out as behavior, actions, habits, and your self esteem. So your thoughts, your feelings, and your behaviors. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those to are the, the woman with uh, um, the agoraphobia. Is that um, a friend of mine? was re recently experiencing that for a couple of years. And so um, if you're interested, just let me know or let Dina know um, so that you guys can communicate and you can have a support from someone who can um, relate to you. The power is in your hands, ladies, to take those first steps. So we are very lucky tonight to have Tiffany DuVernay, Empowerment Specialist, here helping us with um, techniques and strategies on how to retrain your brain after trauma. Um, Crystal says, we don't deserve to tolerate any belittlement, criticism, or hostility, angst, or any grimy drama against us. We deserve the world handed to us on a sil silver platter for reals 100 fire. <laughs> All right, Miss Crystal. I see you got some thumbs up and some hearts on that one. <laughs> I would definitely like to second that by saying, ladies, queens, black women, this is the channel for melanated women, just like you and me and Tiffany. But we also embrace all women in this message. But in particular, this goes out to the black melanated queens. We deserve. And you can say this, you can repeat after me if you want. I deserve the best that life has to offer. I deserve the best that life has to offer. I love myself. I forgive myself. I honor myself. I love myself. I forgive myself. I am free. I am safe. I deserve the best that life has to offer. And so if you just like, those are just like a few things that I say to myself, I wanted to share those, those things with you. Self-forgiveness is so important because sometimes you can beat yourself up about the past or things that you accepted or things that you did or didn't do or forgot to do or whatever, you know, you can should all over yourself as they say, I shoulda, shoulda, shoulda. What I'm saying to you today is that just take that first step. This is not the whole how to retrain your brain. Tiffany has been gracious enough to come on here and share with us the beginning steps. There's more work that you guys have to do. But if you take these first steps with getting into your mind, you have a pattern a pattern of abuse. Abuse always starts with self. Now, of course, when you're young, you know, someone can abuse you. But when you get past being a young person, it becomes internalized. So if you're in an abusive relationship, that means inside mentally and spiritually, you're abusing yourself. So the abuse has to stop. It starts here. It has to stop here. So you have to gain that inner strength that when you're telling yourself, maybe I deserve it. Or when I tell myself, I'm scared. Or when someone else tells myself, no one's ever gonna love me. Or when someone tells themselves that I'm stupid. Or when I used to tell myself, I'm such a fat pig. Or when, you know, any of those things, that is self abuse. So what Tiffany is saying to us, if I'm interpreting you correctly, is that in order to get off of that train, first you have to like listen to yourself, identify those thoughts. This is the way out, it's through your mind. You exit that merry-go-round through your mind. And when you release it through your mind, guess what? It's gonna come up in your feelings and you might cry. You might feel some kind of way. You might be a little bit upset. It's okay to release those feelings. It's okay to 
tell yourself, I forgive you. I forgive myself. When you're crying and you're upset, I forgive myself. I love me. I love myself. I deserve better and I'm going to do better now. That's how you have to nurture yourself. That's what I do. Now, Tiffany may have some other ideas, but that's what I do to increase my, um, my healing, my enjoyment of myself, my love of myself, um, enjoying my life, better friends. Your outer will reflect your inner. So once you start to get this right, there's going to be some changes that are going to start to happen naturally outside of you and some that you will have to have the inner strength to be able to make, to make that shift away from abuse. Tiffany? Yes. Do you have anything to add? Did I do okay there? <laughs> yeah. Um, That's just what I, those are my, tec my I, techniques. <laughs> you know, I don't really, expect people to talk about anything they're currently um, experiencing because um, that's just not what we do in those unhealthy or toxic or dysfunctional relationships so if anybody would like to contact me you know I'm open to that um, if someone has had that experience in the past and don't feel like they've really healed from it I'm open to have those conversations also. And I would say that, um, <clears throat> you know, you may see a phrase that makes you feel really good. Well, post that up somewhere in your house where you can actually see it and say it to yourself or maybe in the notes on your phone or somewhere where you can go look at a few positive things. So, um, if I could pick one of mine to leave you with, which was a magnet on my aunt's refrigerator. It said, expect something wonderful. Mm -hmm. That's one of mine that I would like to leave you with. Expect something wonderful. Mm -hmm. So I just have a couple of, uh, you know, Emily and Crystal, I really appreciate how active and open you guys are being with sharing. And I want to thank everyone for being here and joining us tonight on flyanubianqueen.com. On Facebook, it's the network for melanated women just like me and you and some men. Um, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe and share this message with people. I'm sure there's some other women and probably some men too who could really use this introduction to how to retrain your brain. And again, this was just a little introduction. Um, Tiffany, is it still okay for me to give out your email address? Sure, I'm trying to think, what do you think is the best way to contact me? Oh, you gave me one the other day. Oh yes, 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 I did, yeah. okay, yeah, that one. <laughs> so if you guys, like we're not gonna leave you hanging and I can say I am not an expert. Now I have done some personal work and there's still work to be done um, in my life. I'm still on my journey, but I think I am nearing the end of um, some of my healing from some childhood traumas. However, I try to share my techniques for my personal growth, but we have an expert here. So I would say if you are experiencing something, anything, don't feel like it's too small or nobody cares or, you know, oh, you know, they got more important things to do. No. If there's something that you feel that you're experiencing, there's some kind of trauma or something sitting in the back of your mind, weighing on your life, weighing on your spirit, your heart, please feel free to reach out to Tiffany at this email address. She is trained in this. And if she can't help you, she has connections to resources that will assist you. This is a serious matter. It doesn't have to be someone raping you or beating you down. It can be verbal. It can be financial. There are a lot of different ways that people can be abusing you. If you want to be free of that, please reach out to N-E-E-U-Q-R-O-I-R-R-A-W at gmail.com. Again, that's N-E-E-U-Q-R-O-I-R-R-A-W. 
U Q R O I R R A W at gmail.com. So basically it's the word, the words warrior queen spelled backwards at Gmail. And you can get in contact with Tiffany DuVernay, empowerment specialist, and she will connect you with the resources, the services that you need to move forward on your healing journey. And please leave your phone number too. I don't expect um, everything to be done in writing. So if you decide to email me, leave your phone number also and we can chit chat. So I just want to let you guys know that we are here in love. Um, I am yes. so blessed to be a part of this uh, platform at Fly Nubian Queen dot com and um, I'm so blessed to have Tiffany DuVernay come into my life. I think she and I are going to be working together on a personal level because I feel like, hey, I could use some of this stuff too. So I'm coming to you ladies and letting you know that there is no shame in this. You know, I appreciate you sharing the screen with me tonight. Yeah, there's no shame in this. Um, I hope that this has reached and touched whoever it needed to tonight because it's definitely touched me. Yeah, it's definitely touched me. I'm very excited to continue on this journey. Um, I hope you guys have a wonderful night. Please like, subscribe, and share and say thank you to Miss Tiffany DuVernay for being here. We might have to bring her back. Check out the group. So I'll see you in the group. Okay. Um, hold on. Let me see. If you know we on time delay here. <laughs> Anybody got anything? Last words? Okay, I guess not. Anyway, I love you guys. Thank you for being here. Have a great night. Bye.